there's three reasons that I think make Peruvian cuisine very interesting and fun. Flavor profiles, right? The flavor, the flavor of the food is just amazing. You know, it competes with the Southeast Asian flavors because it's bold, acidic, spicy, you know, strong flavors. Um, I think also the cultural influences. Not a lot of people know that, you know, the Japanese Peruvian have their own cuisine in Peru. The Chinese Peruvian have their own cuisine in, in Peru. You know, there's the Spanish influence, uh, the African, the indigenous, and then you have the biodiversity, right? You have all these different microclimates in Peru that the result of is all these amazing ingredients. So for us, we kind of want to make we want to make Peru, Peruvian cuisine one of, the, one of the major topics of conversation when people want to go out to eat. It's usually always like, oh, let's go eat a burger or a pizza or sushi. I would love to get to the point where Peru is, Peruvian cuisine is up there. Not that it's not already elevated, but I feel like it's not elevated in New York yet. Hi, uh, I'm Eric Ramirez. I'm the chef owner of Llama Inn in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Mr. Rubato is our take on Nikkei cuisine. Nikkei is the fusion of Peruvian and Japanese. I like the, the way the preparation of how we do the, the, the quinoa tofu. It's not your traditional um, style of tofu. Um, I like the textures. It's all very like creamy and kind of supple and, and lush. So first we start with caviar and then we cover it with our quinoa tofu. So this is chancaga. This is an unrefined sugar. It's, it's like our brown sugar. And then we cover it with our quinoa furakaki. I think it's a playful dish. We've started our tasting menu here at, at our kitchen counter, use, utilizing proven ingredients and flavors and kind of introducing them in an elevated way. Uh, Mr. Roboto is, it's a tasting that, that goes through New York, Peru, and Japan, all, all at the same time. So I was exposed to Nikkei, so my grandmother's Nikkei. My grandma's the epitome of Nikkei. My grandmother grew up in Peru, her dad is from Japan, and her mom is Peruvian. So they had my grandmother, and my grandmother is what you would consider Nikkei. Um, never grew up eating it, you know, never really, really knew much about it until I was a lot older. Um, but always very intrigued about it, about that side of my grandmother. Um, and I, you know, I've always thought like, a good way of learning culture is through food. This is our Nikkei ceviche. What makes it Nikkei is definitely the ingredients, the seaweed, the lotus root, the ponzu. Here's, we'll start adding our, our leche de tigre. Leche de tigre is the byproduct. It's the byproduct of ceviche. After it sits, the, the, the leftover is called leche de tigre because it makes you like a tigre, like it wakes you up, it's good for hangovers. You know, it makes you strong. So then I'm going to add charred pineapple. This gets made fresh every day. 1941 was the largest migration of Japanese. Over 26,000 Japanese migrated to Peru. And this was after Pearl Harbor. So it was after the war. And uh, the Pacific was this huge trade, like trade highway. Uh, so a lot of Japanese just ended up there trying to figure out how to cook their food but with using proven ingredients or whatever other ingredients were available to them. So they kind of met in the middle and they made this like, this beautiful cuisine, which is Nikkei. It is sushi rice, but we cook it in cilantro water and we add our sofrito to it. So it turns into this. I slice our wagyu. We cut it with this. This is, this is the, the beef heart marinade, the anticucho marinade. A little spray of acidity. And there you go. Uh, and then we do a version of nigiri. Um, instead of the rice, it's gausa. Gausa is our, 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 our cold uh, potato puree mixed with ají amarillo and lime juice. So we wanted to use the gausa as our vehicle for like 
for the nigiri, like if it was in, pl in place of the rice. Uh, so we do two versions. We do the charred octopus with the olive mayo, and then we do a, a cured and, and charred mackerel. So Japanese food is very, very subtle in flavor, right? But then when you introduce the Peruvian aspect of it, it just makes it, it's like, it, it pops more. It has more flavor because like Peruvian food is very like, it's very flavorful. So this is the, the pre-dessert before the, the banana brown butter miso one. This is um, kiwi sorbet with chirimoya coca and matcha meringue. Very Peruvian, yeah. This grows in the, in the Andes. We infuse uh, coca leaves into like, like syrup and then we season it with this. The kiwi sorbet and then a couple pieces of meringue. So this is just meringue with matcha powder. Kiwi and matcha is, a, a, I think, a very like traditional flavor combination that you see in Peru. You know, this style of restaurant is, is kind of what's in right now, right? You have all the restaurants in Brooklyn that are doing the new American. You know, it's, it's kind of taking that concept, that mentality of that, that style of food and doing that, but making it, doing it with like Peruvian soul, right? With Peruvian heart. With us, like we can, we can, we can explore the Japanese. We can explore the Chinese. We can explore the the New York Peruvian. You know, like the we can explore the sandwich culture. You know, and and, and I want to hit every every part of it and kind of make a name for Lama in New York. You know, yeah, I think Nikkei cuisine is um is something that New Yorkers are gonna embrace pretty well. Um, New Yorkers love flavorful food, spicy food, and Japanese cuisine is super popular here, so mixing those two together is, should be a home run. I'm, I'm trying to build an empire. I'm, I'm going to, it's gonna happen. I hope so, <laughs> knock on wood.